Hello, my name is Soli. I am a 21, almost 22 year old wife, homemaker, mother of one precious little baby and pro-traditional and biblical womanhood. I am so glad that you came to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you about why I never took birth control and why I never plan to. I really hope to offer a different perspective than what is out there. This is not meant to, you know, be judgment on anybody who, you know, does youth, use birth control or anything like that. This is just meant to share my experience and what um, God has shown us. When I was first looking up birth control, I did not really come across many resources from a biblical perspective and so I hope that this is encouraging and edifying to those of you watching and that you can take something away from this video. I know that for me something like this would have been really helpful to have seen and so I hope God uses this video in your life. So I'm going to tell you my story about why I never took birth control. So to start, I want to say that I had always wanted children right away in marriage. I was saving myself for marriage and so I knew that like when I was married, I hoped to just see whatever happens, have kids in God's timing. Just because I wanted kids, not really for any reason other than I just loved kids. I come from a family of seven kids. Both my parents come from huge families. And so I knew that I just wanted a big family right away, but there was nothing like scriptural or like nothing that I had heard in church. It wasn't like a conviction. It was just like, this is what I really want in life. When Andre and I, Andre is my husband, when we were dating and I knew that we were nearing engagement and I assumed that our engagement would be pretty short whenever it happened, I was starting to look into different birth control methods. I was like really looking into the IUD. I kind of took the pill out of the question because I already knew that I did not want to deal with that. Um, and I came across natural family planning. I deep dove into it. I was like watching so many videos and stories and blah, 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 and learning everything that I could about it. And then I was like, this is what I want. Like, this is the answer. I don't have to put anything foreign in my body. I don't have to deal with hormones. Like, this is amazing. I brought it up to my then boyfriend, Andre, and he was like, no, I don't want to do that. And my bubble, was burst <laughs> he burst in my bubble i was like what what at that point it seemed like the only options were the next planon, which is like an arm insert or the iud which there's different types of iud's and i knew that i did not want anything inside of me that was not normal and that was not natural my cycle is so good and so healthy I didn't want to to try and fix something that wasn't even broken or actually break something that wasn't even broken. And I did not want to put a, a stop to my natural cycle. So we went kind of around and around and we're talking, just hashing it out, trying to figure out what would be the best thing to do for us. Andre did not want to have kids right away. And I was willing to accept that because I knew I trusted Andre's judgment. And I know that even if Andre would have wanted me to get the IUD, because I trusted him and he really did lead our relationship, even though he wasn't my husband yet, I, I did, you know, as we were preparing for marriage, I knew that I wanted to submit to whatever he wanted for us. I would have been willing to do that, but by the end of that conversation, we're like, okay, well then, I guess we should just wait to have kids because Andre's like, I don't want to have kids right away. I don't want a family yet. And we don't want to use any sort of protection. And we also don't want to do natural family planning. Well, Andre didn't want to do natural family planning. We're like, I guess we should just wait to get married until we want to start a family, which was so sad to me because I wanted to get married and he didn't want kids for another couple years. And I'm like, how are we supposed to wait two years 
to have kids. I guess it could have been done, but like y'all, it would not, I feel like it would not have been a wise choice at all to try and like save ourselves for like two years. Oh my word. So we didn't come to any concrete conclusions that night. I think we, I just left feeling like so discouraged and so upset. I thought that I had like found like the answer to all my birth control problems, which was natural family planning. And then this guy that I was going to marry didn't even want to do that. Fast forward. <laughs> That's very fast forward. Less than a year later, we're married. I take a test. And it's positive and I was pregnant how how did we go from almost deciding to wait two years before we got married because we weren't ready for kids to doing absolutely nothing and getting pregnant right away in our marriage well I'm so glad you asked because that's what this video is about I'm just gonna go through the different conclusions that god really brought us to over time even within our marriage like while we were married and we're still coming to like some of these conclusions god is showing us all the time like this is my design this is my plan this is the way i created it to be now we have the most precious little angel baby he's almost a year old it just has been perfect like had he not shown us that our lives would be completely different and i know he would have been able to redeem that but i just feel so blessed that he showed us that now early in our marriage and even before we got married there was so many things that changed and i'm just gonna go through them so the first thing that we realized children are a blessing from the lord you know the bible says that they're an inheritance and blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. We went to this like pre-marriage class thing. The pastor in the video actually said something that was so profound. Children are the only blessings from God that we ask him to hold off on. We're like, God, give me blessings, bless me, let your blessings rain down. And then God's like, okay, here, have some children. And you're like, no, 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 not this blessing. Not yet. My next point, the main reason why we wanted to wait is because of the money aspect. Over time, God kept showing us and revealing to us like he would provide. And, you know, bringing us across people that chose to have kids right away that were still, you know, successful. It still ended up being able to reach their money goals. That still every single time they needed something, God always provided. God always came through. And we knew that in our own personal lives, God always gave us exactly what we need whenever we needed it. Times that I needed something, he always came through. And that was the same for Andre. Why are we using finances as an excuse to not receive God's blessings? He'll always cover your needs. Like when you're a child, when you're his child, he doesn't leave his children destitute, but he cares for you. He is glorified when you trust in him to provide. The other thing that happened that was really just earth shattering for us, having a full understanding of God's design for marriage and realizing that marriage and sex and children and sex are all interchangeable. You shouldn't have one without the other because of the way that God created it. God wants us to save sex for marriage. He created sex to be fruitful. He created it so that when the man and the woman come together, they make babies. If you're doing the act, there's always that possibility of getting pregnant, even if you are on birth control, really. There's no 100% guarantee way unless you're just abstinent, but that's because that's the way that God created it to be. What happened with the invention of the pill and now all these different birth control methods is that it really gave us the ability to separate those three, which ended up being so detrimental because now we have Christian couples that aren't even having kids, that aren't even being fruitful and multiplying and, and even wanting to receive those blessings. And then you have things like abortion because now um, girls are, you know, having sex because they think, oh, sex is great, whatever. And then 
they they face the natural effect of having sex with his children. They're not ready for children. What do they do? They go and they have an abortion and they kill their offspring. And that is just so devastating. And we really have to get back to realizing that when God gave Adam, this is literally the beginning of time, he gave Adam this woman, Eve, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. Children are supposed to only be in marriage. When we realized that marriage was really primarily for having children, that was just so life-changing. Yes, there are other reasons as well, but because marriage is the only institution where you are permitted by God, under the umbrella of God, to have sex, and sex produces children, it, it's profound because it's like, wow, you should have children. If you're having sex, you should be fruitful. The other reason why I chose to forego having birth control or using birth control even and even other methods is the health aspect. Birth control wreaks havoc on the woman's cycle. It causes her you know, to not ovulate, causes these false periods. It messes with your hormones and even if you feel fine on it which some women do um, it's still wreaking havoc on your body this article is by um, an OBGYN and it's called why I'm one OBGYN not prescribing the birth control pill and I'll link this and some other resources that I've come across in the little description box below I just want to make sure I said everything about the last point Okay. Yeah. So this article says estrogen is the master female hormone regulating all energy production and brain function as well as bone, joint, muscle, gut, and immune health. Substitution of estrogen and progesterone with the false chemical mimic results in havoc, issues with vaginal health, life-threatening blood clots, depression, suicidal thoughts, becoming hypertensive, including irritable bowel syndrome, autoimmune diseases, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, kidney disease, insulin resistance, so many. Like, I, you really need to look through this article and just the health aspect alone. This was actually the main reason why I didn't want to take any pills. It, this alone was reason enough for me to not want to go on any form of contraception that you like put in your body. The other thing was realizing the design for women. Women are literally designed to carry babies. We have a womb. We have all the right reproductive hormones, parts, to be able to have a baby inside of us and to grow that life and to feed and sustain that life after it's born. That is the purpose of women, is to have a baby, to be able to carry life. And I'm like, why would I want to squander that? Barrenness was always seen as a curse. It was always seen as sad, as devastating. With the invention of birth control, yes, there were other natural methods of, of family planning before, the invention of the pill, but really there is this entire shift where we're intentionally choosing child barrenness. We're intentionally choosing to be barren. Even looking at the Bible, which you don't even need to go like thousands of years back to Sarah, but just seeing how she was barren and how devastating that was for her, like that's how it was. My body is perfectly fine. It's healthy and it's functioning well. I don't want to put anything in it that not only stops it from functioning well, but deteriorates it and makes it actually super sick, especially because I knew that I wanted to have babies and I didn't want to do anything to my body that would impair that or affect that. And something else that I failed to mention back when I was talking about the birth control and health is that some forms of birth control even act as an abortifacient. There is a possibility that for a lot of these forms of birth control the sperm and the egg are actually able to meet and we know that contraception the beginning of life starts when that sperm and egg meet because that is an entirely new being it doesn't allow it to implant and so as a christian that's something that i would not want to do because i love life and i know that i would love every single one of my babies and i don't want to do anything 
to harm them if I can help it. The last thing that I want to bring to attention and that God brought to our attention is the fact that the church's view of children shifted with the culture. The way that we view birth control and sex and marriage and all of that, it's fairly new and it is not what has been the norm. The idea of being a married couple and choosing not to have kids at all or choosing to wait years and years and years to have kids was not the normal mindset. And what's sad is that instead of taking a stand against it, the church just really cowered down and said, no, like we're just gonna go along with it. There is no longer an objective Christian view on children, marriage, sex, whatever. Instead, they cowered down and went right along with the entire birth control agenda, which is another thing, just looking into why it was created, all of that just is enough to make me say, I don't want to do that. In Luke 24, 28, as Jesus was walking to the cross to be crucified, these women were weeping and mourning. And this is what Jesus said to them. He said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. Women are saying, you know, it's amazing to be child free, never have children and children are gross. All of those things that are completely contrary to scripture. I just want you all to know watching this that <sighs> choosing not to go on birth control is literally one of the biggest blessings in our entire lives. Like we love it. There's so much freedom. There's so much health and so many blessings. We've already been fruitful because of this and we are so grateful that God really showed us this. We have his objective word to follow and that he gave us, you know, sound minds and, and logic and, and these bodies that we can really learn so much from. I hope that this was really helpful to some of you and and maybe you learned something new maybe you something like sparked your attention if you have any questions at all about this topic just ask me in the comments below or you can also dm me on my instagram and maybe if i get enough questions i could do like an entire q a video on this specific topic because i know there's going to be a lot of questions people wanting clarification on different things and so i'm more than willing to answer those questions that being said i'm going to read a question that i got on my instagram this is from the good gram and she asked did you always want to get married young and the answer to that question is yes i always wanted to get married young i would have been like so happy getting married at like 18. i wanted to get married young and i ended up getting married at 20 years old and that was like my dream right there i know there's a lot of girls that want to get married young and it doesn't always you know happen at the age that they want to so i'm just really blessed that god gave me my husband when he did i definitely don't take it for granted at all it's so much fun it's marriage is great and i love it so much thank you all so much for watching like i said any questions ask me i hope to see you all in the next video bye that's it y'all